Hello and welcome to video number six. Let's talk about formatting blocks and we'll go to every single block like we did in the previous video. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some blocks. So we're gonna click on the add block here. We're gonna go find the formatting blocks, which are here. So you see there's code, classic, custom HTML, preformatted, pull quote, table, and verse. So most of you, I will say, will not really use this unless you are using maybe an outside third-party service and they say something like, you need to add this code to your website. So some of them are going to say you're going to need to add it to like the header or the footer. In those cases, you might want to hand it off to a webmaster uh, because this would be different. But let's say, for example, that they say add the code to the body of your page. So if that's the case, all you have to do is click on code and then you can add the code here. Now, like I said, this is for advanced users. Most of you will not use that. Next up is the HTML. Now, believe it or not, some of you and a good majority of you will probably encounter something like this. So they might tell you, enter this HTML code into the body of your WordPress site. So if that's the case, click on custom HTML and you simply enter the HTML here. Now, most of you will not know HTML, but that's just how it is. So if I were to write some HTML, and what I'm doing now is I'm basically creating a link. So I'll do HTTP, google.com, Google. So if you have no idea what I just did, you don't have to worry about that. But if I click on preview, what I did was I just created a link. So it's a link. So if you don't know HTML, it may not be applicable to you, but at least you are aware of what this block is. Okay, so next up we have formatting. Under formatting, we have classic. So what this is, is the old classic editor. Now, do not be confused that this is how to convert back to the old classic editor. We're still using Gutenberg, all right? So this just happens to be within a block. So if you like the old classic editor and you wanna utilize it within a block, that's fine, all right? So that's what that is. So you can see what is available to you. Going back, you got formatting, we got pre-formatted. So if I go back here, Okay, so to explain what the pre-formatted block is, like the paragraph block, the pre-formatted block is basically there to display text. Now, unlike the paragraph block, the pre-formatted block basically keeps any spacing or any line breaks exactly as they are entered. So in other words, the pre-formatted block is displayed in sort of a monospace font, making it easy to keep text perfectly aligned. Now the pre-formatted block also includes styling or the ability to add hyperlinks or as short links that a code block doesn't have. So like I said, most of you will not use this, okay? But it's there if you ever have to need it. So going back to formatted blocks, we did these, we did this. So we got pull quote and table. Table is nice if you wanna create a table. So if you want to create a table that has maybe three columns and five rows, you could do three columns, five rows, not 25, five rows, and click create 
and there we go so now we can enter text within the table and this is amazing because this is something that you could not really do in the old classic editor you would have to find like a plugin and all that to do that so this is the old classic editor so this is really neat this is something that you would definitely use going to formatting got table we got verse so verse is great for poetry uh, as you can see it uses special spacing formats or quote song lyrics so if you're using something to create song lyrics or poetry this would be great for you moving on we got just a few more so we got we did this one we did this one and we haven't done this one so pull quote it says it gives special visual emphasis to a quote so the other ones didn't really allow you to change the color but it allows you to change a little bit here and there so what this allows you to do is it allows you to change the actual color so this is a quote but the difference is you can change the main color so you can change the top line and the bottom line so as you can see it looks fairly nice and professional like that so we can keep it red and we can change the text color to something like black gray maybe orange maybe green or maybe we can do green up here and red here something like that or blue so that's the main difference so quote is different than verse difference than pull quote so as you can see what this allows you to do is it changes literally the formatting and makes it look nice so those are the formatting blocks let's move on to layout elements in the next video hello and welcome back this is video number four using the sidebar the sidebar for the Gutenberg editor is located to the right so we're going to discuss the different features and what's available to you okay so the sidebar is to the right and as I briefly mentioned in the previous videos that Upon editing certain blocks, you will see that the right-hand sidebar will change. So the reason why they've entered a lot of different other features into the sidebar is because, as you can see, there's only so much that you can put in here. So as you can see here, if I highlight this, I can edit the block type, the heading, heading 1, 2, 3, 4, bold italicize I can hyperlink it and I can do a few more things now if I were to want to change the alignment I could not do that over here so if I highlight this here so we highlight this here let me highlight it you can see text alignment left center and to the right and if I click on advanced I can add a HTML anchor which basically lets you link that link so that's essentially what this is but there are certain elements here that are kind of redundant so you just need to be aware of what is redundant and what is not alright so if we go to the bulleted list here you can see a list is a list so there is not really anything additionally to that all right so right here you can change it from an unordered list which is basically dots to an ordered list which is numbers as you can see here so if we change it back to this we can indent it and that's what this is about so we can move it to the right hand side so we can move this one to the right and move this one to the left we can then bold we can italicize and there we go so what I found is that as you begin to edit the blocks you will learn 
what other features are available to you. Now that's in terms of blocks. If we go over here, there's blocks and there's document. Document controls the whole page or the whole post. So in other words, you can go through here. You can see that this post is public, meaning everybody else can see this. So if I wanted to change this, I could to private so that everybody cannot see this. Post format, we have standard, we have uh, different post formats for different media types. You can say stick to the top of the blog. So you can move this to the top of the blog. You can click pending review if it's pending. So if you are say a writer or you have a writer on your team, you could give them access to the site and you could have them click pending review. And then you come in and you review it. And if it's good to go, then you post it and publish it to public. Permalinks is basically the URL. So if you click here, you're going to see the domain name with the name of the page. So like I talked about earlier, if you name the page title, a certain name, that will be your domain.com slash the title name. All right. That's basically what the permalink is. Now this enables you to change that if you choose to do so, but just bear in mind that if you're editing on a live site and you change the permalink, and that post or page has been there for maybe weeks or even months, then by changing it, you could potentially lose the traffic that is coming from maybe Google to that page. So you would need to use like a WordPress plugin like Yoast SEO to change that. Then of course you have categories, which allows you to categorize your posts or your pages. You can click add new category if you want to add an additional category. Now, as you can see, there are parent categories. And then if you want to make a category underneath a specific parent category, this will become the child category. So that's there if you want to add categories. And then of course you have tags. Tags allows you to create a similarity between post or pages. So if you have, let's say five posts that are dealing with a specific, maybe uh, audio soundtrack, or maybe they're a specific element that is different than categories, then you can enter that here. So for example, let's say that you have a podcast blog and you've interviewed five different people. And they are very similar in a specific industry or niche. Then you can put that here. And what that will do is if somebody's interested in that niche, they click on that tag and they will be able to see the other five people that you've interviewed in that specific niche or industry. So that's what tags is all about. Featured image is basically the image that people will see before they click on the post or page. So this allows you to enter an image. We have an excerpt and then of course the discussion. So you can allow comments, you can remove comments or remove pingbacks and trackbacks. So if you don't want discussion, you can uncheck that. And if you do want discussion, you can click allow comments. All right. So that's basically it. Block is different. Of course, block pertains to over here. And that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next video.